Here we are, Tuberville Island, on the western side of the Antarctic Peninsula. Beautiful glacier, and right over here, we're going to visit this rookery, just filled with Gen 2 penguins. And try to watch their behavior. Penguins manage to survive in this extremely harsh climate by evolving a special reproductive system very much like the birds evolved when they survived the extinction of the dinosaurs. When birds evolved 150 million years ago from dinosaurs, they survived the massive global climate change that made the dinosaurs go extinct 60 million years ago because they had evolved a temperature independent ZZZW chromosomal system of sex determination. While dinosaurs succumbed to extinction because of the birth of all males, birds in every climate of the globe maintained their 50-50 sex ratio of males and females because of genetic chromosomal sex determination. Like with mammals, and unlike other dinosaurs, there was a female or male sex determination gene that was impervious to environmental temperature aberrations. That evolution of sex determining genes protects species from extinction, but also causes at the same time, paradoxically, an inexorable deterioration of sperm count in humans. The most peculiar of all the birds who survived this massive global temperature change is the penguins in the deep south around the South Pole. Most animals on the globe have a photoperiodic regulation of seasonal breeding, which means that bears will breed in the spring and moose and deer uh, and antelope species will breed in the fall, so that the gestational period for the young allows them to survive through the summer so that they can be ready for a winter season already having grown and developed enough to make it on their own. <laughs> hey buddy, that was my curl that you used to put me like that. Ah, almost did it. Almost did it. Nah, too cold. Did it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, let's get out of here. It's too cold. Birds almost everywhere throughout the globe will breed in the spring and rapidly hatch their eggs and feed their offspring so that the young birds are capable of surviving and flying before the following fall season and winter. Oh yes. Now, we check the rookery out. Many, many, many thousands. Too numerous to count. This is where they're resting and nesting. Taking care of their chicks. If they'll be big enough and ready enough to face the Arctic winter, the Antarctic winter, sorry. Sometimes they're little fights over territory. Oh, they're fighting. Oh, oh, they've got a little bit of a turf battle going there. Whew. Those guys are not happy with each other. Emperor penguins, the huge penguins that we saw in the famous motion picture March of the Penguins, are birds that live in the deep interior of Antarctica, in the coldest area, closest to the South Pole. And they have a reproduction system somewhat different than the penguins farther north in the warmer Antarctic Peninsula. The huge emperor penguins from March of the Penguins leave the water in late summer and breed and their offspring cannot possibly be ready to survive on their own until the following spring. So they had to develop and figure out how to survive through the winter so their offspring could go out to see the following spring. Now that pattern is completely different from that of most birds 
who will breed in the spring so that their chicks can be ready to survive on their own before winter comes. The smaller penguins that we see here uh, in the warmer regions of Antarctica, like most birds, come out of the water in spring, breed, and work feverishly to feed and grow their chicks through the brief Antarctic summer so that they will be ready for winter to go back out to sea. During this relatively pleasant summer season, these Gentoo penguins band together in huge numbers of 100,000 or more in every rookery in order to protect their young from predators like this skewer that just love to feed on penguin eggs or chicks. One parent has to go out to sea daily to collect thousands of krill from the ocean to bring back, while the other parent stays to protect and the feed the chicks with the krill that is already collected. They're going directly in. Why are they marching alongside? Well, because they're waiting for one to go in. Oh, I see. When one goes in, the other goes. As soon as one goes in, they'll go. During each trip out to sea to collect food, these penguins risk being eaten by leopard seals or even whales, and their only protection is their huge numbers. Look at them. Come to see us off the premises. Oh my god. What a scene. They're coming right at us. Oh my word. They're everywhere. Oh my word. Surprisingly, there is an incredibly abundant variety of wildlife in Antarctica, including seals and different species of whales, so many types of birds, that uh, they are all struggling to reproduce and survive. And the basic source of all their food for the whales and the seals and the penguins and the birds ultimately is the krill, which are these tiny little crustaceans of the Antarctic Ocean that are the most numerous of all creatures on the planet. The penguins go out to sea to collect uh, thousands of krill at a time. The whales live almost entirely on krill, although the killer whales will also eat seals and penguins and most of the seals as well as the seabirds and all of this abundant Antarctic wildlife depend completely on this tiny little crustacean. None of the abundance of wildlife in Antarctica could exist without the krill for their diet and they could never have developed if they had not evolved genetic determination of sex and sex ratio so as to survive and reproduce in this harsh, bitter, cold climate.